My name is Jamie Fitzgerald, and I'm the Senior Product Manager for Management Solutions here at Palo Alto Networks. And today, I'm going to talk to you about how we can correlate different security events together to help protect your network. So let's talk more about that. So in most networks, there are several different security devices. And each one of those are creating a whole bunch of different events. So trying to connect the dots on a whole bunch of different security events when there's a whole bunch of different things that are occurring can be very challenging. Now, not only is this challenging because there are possibly multiple different solutions that you're actually having to interact with, log into, and manage individually, but trying to tie those different events together and knowing what to tie together takes a particular set of skills that are often hard to come by. And what you'll find is that it takes an enormous amount of time to do this. So to tie the different events together that things like, for example, let's say an attack was occurring, then what you're going to see is often a particular set of events. Now, those events might be something like a, a, a file download from potentially uh, an unknown URL filtering category, followed by, let's say, a DNS request to a malicious domain. Now, seeing those things individually could be quite interesting, but they may not be that interesting. So what, what the challenge is, is taking all these different events together and finding that, that there's a real conclusion here. So if you were to do this manually, what does it mean? It means that most likely it's going to take a long time. And by the time you actually discover this infection, it's too late because either the adversary has already gotten what they wanted or it's already spread to other, other hosts within the network. So at Palo Alto Networks, we take a different approach. We have created something that we call the automated correlation engine, where we can take a whole set of different events and tie those together so that if we ever see them in aggregate, it might be something critical is occurring on your network. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is we tie the events that are, that are most interesting together so that we can say, huh, this looks like a bigger attack or something that with if ever seen together would actually mean that a compromise has already taken place. So let's talk a bit more about how the correlation engine works and how it can actually work for you. So the correlation engine is built in uh, a set of, it's basically a set of logic that is fed by really two different sources. One is unit 42, and the other is wildfire. Now, it's important to mention feed into and how that actually works. So we have something that we call content. Now, when we talk about our content, we talk about things like our AV updates, our vulnerability signatures, our spyware or C2 signatures, including our wildfire signatures. And now, these new correlation objects that are fed into our correlation engine are part of our content feed. And we have now a new type of content that we call a correlation object. Now, this object is actually describing what the engine needs to match in order for us to tell the bigger story, to tell you what actually critically is happening on your network. All right? So the first thing I want to do is talk to you about how Unit 42 can help uh, provide correlation objects that are really helping to bring our threat research team directly to your network. So let's go through an example. So one that I like to describe is where, let's say you have the Palo Alto Networks firewall and you have a host behind that firewall. And you have an adversary out here uh, that's a bad guy and uh, he is trying to get into your network and attack one of your hosts. So the first thing that you might actually see are some scans. And that might start off with a particular set of events that are occurring on the firewall. Now, the next thing you might start seeing is once the host has been discovered by the attacker, we might see some vuln signatures, right? And that's going to also create 
a set of events that are occurring on the firewall. And finally, if this host gets compromised, we might start seeing some outbound traffic, which is what we call C2, or command and control. Now, if we saw all of these things occur within, let's say, 24 hours to the same host, there's a very, very good chance that that host is actually compromised. And so, what we're able to do is, is provide this information to you as if one of our threat researchers was actually in front of your solution, your panorama or your firewall, trying to tie these different events together. Right? So, that's one part of it. The second part is how wildfire can actually play into this solution as well. So, let's talk a bit more about that. So, let's start off by, again, looking at our firewall. And we talk about, let's say, a host that's behind there. In fact, we'll make two hosts that you're protecting. You might have a couple more than two. But, for this example, we'll talk about two hosts. Now, what I want to do is talk to you about um, how wildfire can work here. So, let's say that that this host, host A, downloads a file, right? Now, at the time, we may not know if this file is malicious. In fact, we won't, by definition, as part of uh, the description that I'm giving here. So that means that that file is going to come down to the endpoint. Now, what we're going to do is also take that file, and we're going to send that off to Wildfire, right? We send that file to Wildfire. Now, in Wildfire, we are going to analyze this particular file. We're going to tell you everything that we can possibly learn about it in our sandbox. And we're going to come back with a report. Now, in this report is a lot of different information. In fact, what we can see in there is everything that you could possibly want to know from a quality uh, and indicators of compromise perspective. You can see things like registry keys that were changed. You can see things like, um, did it delete your antivirus? Did it try to spread? Um, which is all very, very important and interesting information, and that gets sent back to the firewall. But what's really important in this conversation as part of the correlation engine is we're also looking at what it's doing at the network layer. So what we're able to do is tell you things like, um, if it visited particular URLs, if it actually had generated some particular um, traffic, Right? Um, also, if it actually did any DNS requests. Now, um, when we do this, this actually leads into the same type of content updates that we provide, right? Um, and within a few minutes of the very first time we've ever seen this file come into Wildfire, we produce this report and we produce all of these signatures and send them back. Now, how does this work when it comes to the correlation engine and what it can do for you? Now, what it means is that we're going to start looking for the exact behaviors that we saw in the sandbox directly on your firewall. So I can tell you if I saw the same exact behavior that I saw in the sandbox running on your network. So what does this mean to you? This means that I actually have actionable information if host A that downloaded that file exhibited the exact same behavior that we saw in the sandbox, I can now tell you host A is infected with very, very high confidence. But what we also are doing as part of the correlation engine is we're looking for all behaviors that are associated with this particular sample. Now, let's, let's take a step back here and realize what's going on. It means that every time a sample is actually sent down to your firewall, we're able to, to look at the internals of that, look at the network layer behavior, and start to discover whether that host is actually infected because they executed that file. That means it's personalized to your network for particular pieces of malware that were sent to your network. So if no one else in the entire world has ever seen it but your network, we're still going to be able to look for those behaviors. Now that also means that we're going to start looking for this exact same information from any host in the network. So that means I'm able to tell you if host B started it actually um, exhibiting the same behavior. So let's say this came in through email and we saw that this particular host was infected and we saw it because it happened while they were on, on premise. But for some reason, this other host got infected um, be, without being as part of the firewall. Maybe it was someone through a thumb drive even, right? Um, if that happened, then we are now able to see those same behaviors that were headed to your network from host A exhibited on host B. So again, actionable information. A couple things I want to mention. When host A is the one that downloaded the file and exhibited the behaviors, we call that wildfire correlated C2, right? And when we see a different host in the network, 
exhibit the behaviors that were associated with a different wildfire report. We call this wildfire C2, okay? Now, keep in mind that it's important to know this, but we also need to show you all the evidence. So whenever one of these events occurs, whenever we get a correlation match, there's more than just a log. We actually are going to give you all the evidence that led us to believe that this particular host was infected, including the wildfire report and any of the associated behaviors. So what does this mean for you and what does this mean for your network? It means that the correlation engine can do a few things for you. Number one, prioritize. So when I talk to you about prioritization, it means that I'm able to do a couple of different things. I'm able to help you make sure that your team is spending their time on the most important events. Helping you answer the question is what is the most important thing happening on your network right now? Well, the correlation engine is going to help you answer that question, right? It's also going to help you identify, right? I'm able to identify real threats that are occurring, t connecting the dots for you so that you are, again, spending your time not chasing down loose ends or false positives, but focused on the most important possible events that could be tied together through our correlation engine. And number three, and most importantly, is to stop attacks. Now, obviously, as we're trying to stop these attacks, we're looking at everything that we can possibly do to do this. That's, how, that's why we focus on signatures, trying to stop everything we possibly can when it comes to signatures. But the correlation engine is helping you that even if you can't see every single part of your network traffic, that we can stop those attacks from just looking at simply at the behaviors, tying those different behaviors together, and helping you remediate those attacks as quickly as possible. So thank you for your time. Um, if you would like to learn more about this particular solution or any of the other parts of our product, please check out our website at paloaltonetworks.com or check out other cool videos at our YouTube site, which you're probably watching right now. Thanks a lot.